Ooh, hello there everyone, it's 26 Bond back with another Maiden video. I hope everyone's well. Do you know, I've not posted a video for probably about four weeks now. And uh, sorry about that, it's just life's got in the way a bit and stuff like that. So uh, what I wanted to just show you very, very quickly is a couple of new Maiden bits and bobs which I've picked up. Um, but first of all, I'm going to be a bit of a jammy git and show you this. Jammy? Hmm. What about this? That's pretty jammy, isn't it? That is pretty jammy. That is some good records there. Well, what happened was, um, I actually owned a copy of uh, The X Factor, and I've shown you that in a recent video. Um, but a friend of mine was selling um, both the albums on my Facebook page, which was Iron Maiden, what is, I should say, Iron Maiden Vinyl Collectors on Facebook. So uh, if you haven't joined already or had a look at it, have a look at it now if you can. Um, so I bought another couple of albums off him. And the ones I bought were these, which he sold for me as, as a pair. Now, what I haven't shown you is this. This is my copy of Virtual Eleven, which I bought prior to getting these two extra ones. So I've got two spares of the X Factor and Virtual Eleven going. They're all UK pressings. Um, this one from Shane is an upgrade copy to my copy here. Um, this is the one that I bought on eBay. Um, and it's got some marks at the top and it plays brilliantly. It's been played literally once or twice. The vinyl's great, but the sleeve, there's a few seam splits and things like that. Um, this is now my upgrade copy of it. So. I'm so chuffed to Shane for sending me this one because literally he said he bought both of these uh, Virtual Eleven and the X Factor and never ever played them so there you go well happy with that now as I've shown you the X Factor I'll show you what you get for Virtual Eleven this is the inside gatefold so it's the uh, going along the Virtual Eleven theme this was um, released just before the 1998 World Cup in France uh, Maiden decided to have a bit of a footy theme with this one, so you've got very, very, uh, uh, it's a bit odd really, but they got their, their heads superimposed on footballers and so on and so forth. So they've got Stuart Pearce, Ian Wright, uh, for Faustino Spria, Mark Overmars, and so on and so forth, Patrick Vieira. Um, this is the inner sleeve of one of them. This is an absolute mint copy. That's the first one. I've actually taken the vinyl out and put them in um, white anti-static sleeves just to make sure that these inner sleeves don't get uh, splits in them or, or anything like that. Um, this is the other one. And then you've got the lyrics on that side as well. So this completes my Maiden Studio album collection. Uh, but obviously it doesn't in, doesn't complete my various pressings from around the world so for example I've got to get both of these this one and the X Factor um, Brazilian copies and so on and so forth now you can get bootlegs of both of these um, please PM me if you're thinking of buying um, a copy so perhaps we can compare notes on um, runouts in the matrix, uh, the matrix num numbers, runouts in the dead wax and stuff like that. So feel free to get in contact. I can send you some photos uh, as, as to what a bona fide UK pressing should look like. So there's those two. I thought I'd start with those. And um, as I say, those two um, are for sale. I've, I've got an offer on the X Factor already, but Virtual Eleven. Uh, I can send you some more photos if you want to buy it from me, and I'm happy to post. So. I shall await your call. Now another one, this is another grail that I managed to get hold of very recently. This is the Japanese uh, first pressing of Power Slave, which is one of Maiden's best LPs in my opinion. A lot of people say there's quite a lot of filler on this with the Duelists, Flash of the Blade, Back in the Village. I think they're bloody brilliant songs, personally. Um, the vinyl on this one is never been played. 
it comes in these lovely little anti-static bags. This literally has never been played. There's not a mark on this vinyl at all. Um, now you often find these power slaves uh, on eBay from Japan. You have to send off for them from Japan. I got this one from Germany. Uh, and what's often missing in a lot of these is what I'll show you in a second. But I'll just show you this. This is the that's the standard sort of inner bag, isn't it, for American and UK copies. This is the Japanese insert sheet which opens up there so it has Japanese translations of the lyrics and a little bit of a biography but this is what's often missing this is the poster which you only got um, from the first press so I'll show this to you I've been looking for this for ages so there you go that's the first press Iron Maiden Toshiba EMI promotional poster which you got with the first press of this release from 1984 so I was so happy to get that um, all of my Iron Maidens from Japan are first press all my Iron Maiden from Japan's uh, from Japan are fully complete apart from Number of the Beast that's the only one that I can't seem to get with a poster so if anybody has a beast for sale um, with a poster in excellent to mint condition uh, PM me send me a comment below and hopefully we can do a deal okay a couple of things that I found recently this was four pounds in my local record store this is the original cut to shape uh, trooper picture disc with Jeffro Toll's cross-eyed Mary on the b-side so plays very well this is an original of well it's obviously a original but it's uh, this has got the original uh, transfer in it uh, this is EMI 49 UK pressing of can I play with madness um, which came with a little transfer there you go and this is a standard black vinyl pressing of this now can I play with madness was issued with many labels there's this black one there's a silver one there's a white one now I think there's about five or six variations on the label so I've got three or four of them uh, but it's just crazy things like that with collecting maiden that you, know, you sort of learn as you go along this is a bootleg seven inch um, everyone knows that in Venezuela they reissued uh, in 87 I think the maiden Japan EP with the original cover what was proposed to be the original cover which of which is this one essentially of Eddie holding up Paul Diano's head um, now it didn't have the Venezuelan flag background it was the same background as the stock made in Japan cover this is obviously a bootleg and what they've done is they've taken the four tracks from the Venezuelan release split it over two seven inch uh, recordings so this one on side one has killers and side two has Innocent Exile and this is an I a identical back cover to the Venezuelan release so it has all the Venezuelan uh, credits there um, they do this on various vinyl, they do it on red, blue, yellow and black and my one is a black vinyl okay and now the other um, the first part of this, this is volume two, volume one has the stock background but I believe with the same graphic on there so this one I just thought I didn't want to get the two necessarily so I bought this one because I thought the flag backdrop looked pretty cool okay the next one is I won't show you that because I've shown you those before but I'll show you this one this is the famous mispressing um, Fear of the Dark Live recorded in Helsinki June the 5th 1992 this is there you go so it's a cut to shape picture disc single now on the back it says the b-side is hooks in you live uh, as we all know who have this uh, it plays tail gunner so this is a mispressing so fairly common you could pick this up quite easily but it goes for around about 15 to 20 pounds that one um, make sure when you buy it you have the backing sheet which has your number on this is a limited edition. I think there was like 15 or 20,000 of those. Uh, mine's number 1300 and something, or 13,000 and something. This is a real live one. This is their 1993 uh, live one. This is the, the first one that came out, I think, uh, that year. Um, in, this includes 
songs which were recorded after 85 basically after the live after death album they did a second one called a real dead one which concentrated on some of the rarer classic material from the tour um i haven't got that actually so if anyone's got that and they'd like to donate it to my collection i'm only joking if you'd like to sell it um please let me know but it's a nice gatefold sleeve um in a jacket with some nice notes from Steve and nice graphics on the vinyl on the other side in particular. There you go. This one was in very good, very good condition. Plays superbly. Um, so that was a great addition to my collection. And once again, it's in pretty, it's in excellent condition. This one, it plays superb. So if you can get that into your collection, I advise you to do so. Um, pretty cool live album. I enjoyed that one immensely. This is another bootleg. This is a new one I've just picked up. This is a double live bootleg. Uh, La Bestia in Italia, or The Beast in Italy. Uh, this is a soundboard recording on double red vinyl, limited edition 17 of 100, recorded in Italy, uh, 12th of September 1992. There you go. So this is the Fear of the Dark World Tour. I'll show you the vinyl. As it's a soundboard recording, um, the recording quality is great. This is a real nice, bright red, shocking red vinyl. There you go, with some slight marbling in it. Okay. You can get that on, it, on eBay at the moment. There's a batch just been released, particularly in the UK. Um, I paid £30 for that. I have seen it go for about 55, so um, I advise you to go on to the disc-coverycords.com and order it from a guy I know called Andy who owns the shop. I believe he's got a copy of this in for about 30 quid. So try it with him if you like to pick up that and you like a bit of maiden bootlegs. Now there's a whole series of these. I picked up three from my local record store. Now these are advertised to be numbered promos but they're all on coloured vinyl which there wouldn't be much point in doing a promo on coloured vinyl because they're not for public consumption they're not meant to look pretty they're just to promote something so this is a real live one that's the album I've just shown you um, so these are basically bootleg promos um, there was a spate of these done very attractive vinyl um, but they're a queer release really um, I know Kiss did a few of these as well or there was bootlegs done for Kiss albums Carnival of Souls for one um, they're made to look like promos but they're just bootlegs so I wouldn't pay a lot for these I paid four quid each for these which I think actually was a bit of a bargain um, I've got a real dead one so I do own a real dead one but I don't own the official release you see what I mean they're all numbered as you can see uh, this one is on the same sort of uh, cornflower marbled vinyl colour. And the last one I've got is Peace of Mind, which is on a nice blue one. It's quite attractive, this, I'll show you. There you go, quite attractive blue marbled vinyl. So there you go. So a bit queer and curious for your maiden collection. Not essential, uh, but for four quid each. Well, I would have been daft not to have bought them really, so I did. Um, next one, another bootleg. This is a Swinging Pig bootleg. This is recorded in Argentina, March 2009. It is Cala Boca Locator. I hope I pronounced that right. And once again, like I said, it's limited edition 500. This is 31, uh, 318 of 500 and limited edition yellow vinyl. And the vinyl in here is... Brilliant. I call this beeswax vinyl. Look at that. Cool, isn't it? Really nice labels. Great packaging once again from Swinging Pig. So I heartily recommend this one. Packaging, I'll show you the gatefold as well because it is a gatefold. Let's pop this record back. Here we go. That's the gatefold. So it's some live shots of the boys on the tour. So once again, pretty hard to come by. You can get this on Discogs. Retails at about 60 quid on there. Um, 
I didn't pay anywhere near that. I think I paid 20 euros from Spain. So if you look around, you can find these things. Another bootleg. This is uh, a split between Motley Crue and Iron Maiden from the World Slavery Tour. Uh, recorded in Essen, Germany, 26 October 1984. And this is only volume one. There is a second volume of this with, with an identical cover. The only thing that's different is it says volume two. Um, pretty cool release. Nice packaging. An old bootleg, this one. This is a Buster Brothers bootleg. And sort of standard white labels and a black vinyl for that one as well. So an older bootleg, uh, and it's definitely something well worth going into your collection. And uh, many thanks to Shane uh, for sending me that one. We've done some good deals, me and Shane, on the, on the Iron Maiden Vinyl Collector's Facebook page. And here's another one. This is Metal in the Park. This is a double vinyl uh, recording from Maiden at Donington. Now, I don't think this is taken from the same source as a lot of Donington bootlegs because the sound quality is not as good. Um, a few of my maiden bootlegs from Donington come from the BBC Radio 1 broadcast. Uh, this one seems to be a crowd recording to me. It's a little different. It's not quite as good, but it's a well worth well worth the purchase. I'm very happy with it. Um, not, not an easy bootleg to find this one, so... Uh, packaging's not great on this one, but uh, I was very happy to get hold of that. So, Maiden, Metal in the Park. Now, I've got this one. This is Samson. This is Bruce Dickinson's uh, band prior to joining Maiden. Uh, I've actually not played this yet, but it does include a song called Thunderburst, which it says here is co-written with S. Harris, or Steve Harris. Uh, and I believe that song, because the drummer, Thunderkiss, is a guy called Barry Perkis, who used to be in an earlier incarnation of Maiden, and they wrote a song which turned out to be The Ides of March, which was on Killers, uh, and it was sort of co-written with this guy, I think. So um, what happened was, uh, Samson recorded a song called Thunderburst, which is basically The Ides of March, and Maiden did their version, which is called The Ides of March. So I'll have to listen to that later and check that one out, but uh, there you go. I haven't got any Samson stuff, this is my first one. So I learned a bit of them on YouTube, but it uh, includes the, the original inner, inner sleeve, so I, thought I'd, so I thought I'd give it a go. This is a variation of Beast, Number of the Beast. This is a vinyl reissue from 85-86 on the Price Attack series. Um, it's pretty the same as the other ones. It's got a nice condition, this one. But I bought this one purely because it's got a black label as opposed to the standard Eddie Head, Eddie under a street lamp label. So it's a nice variation, and it's in pretty good nick. It's got a few. Sp it's obviously been played. It's got got a few spindle marks and things like that, but uh, it it sounds pretty good apart from that, you know. So that was that one there. Also, what happens with these? If you do buy any of these price attacks, look out because they did come with insert sheets showing you other releases in that series by other bands. So. If you're like me, you're a bit of a completist with your records. Uh, always look out for things like that. And if you do need another one, because your copy hasn't got it, I've got a spare in there. Another one, this is what my dad found for me. This basically cost him a quid. Now, it's slightly damaged, as you can see at the top. That spoon bit's come off. But this is Can I Play With Madness, UK picture disc. So I do need a better copy of that. So if anyone's selling a better copy of that, let me know. I don't know whether I've shown you these before, but I'll show you them again. Wasted Years Cut Picture Disc from the UK. The Clairvoyant. Back with the Prisoner. Evil That Men Do. Back with Prowler 88. And I've got a couple of these, which is the Running Free Live single. There's various editions of these. This is the black vinyl one. Uh, the black label one, I should say. And there's another one, which is the purple label, which I'll show you as well. So it's a slight variation. So they're both in great condition, which I picked up very inexpensively. And then last but not least, I managed to pick up this, which is the poster version of Infinite Dreams. Oops. Which is... Uh, 
got their engraved signatures on, as you can see, and folds out into a mighty fine. Let's see if I can fold this out without ripping it to shreds. Let's try, shall we, gang? Right, so it opens that way first. That's the made in England. Very topical, guys, isn't it? Uh, that's the made in England artwork on one side, and then the other side, it got like a live shot from the band, and obviously that folds out to be the cover. So there, right, I'm going to put that down because I always get muddled up doing that. So that's pretty much the maiden stuff for this week, guys. I'll try and do another video ASAP because I know uh, four weeks is a bit long to wait between videos. But I hope everyone's well. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.